I wanted to talk a little bit about Rahu and Ketu and a little bit about healing. So astrology is a healing art and in with Jyotish one of the really unique things is the the emphasis on Rahu and Ketu and there's not as much of that emphasis in the Western traditions although they did keep track of it and William Lilly in his book keeps track of Rahu the North Node and stuff so we know that they didn't entirely forget about it. Of course William Lilly was like self-taught and he just had a huge library of books so he might have just been reading a lot of Indian books who knows. Um, when it comes to healing though Rahu and Ketu are very critical of course everything in the chart is important but our deepest wounds in our life you know our deepest issues definitely gonna have to do with Rahu and K2 in your chart like my teacher was always saying you know they show our disease pathology like our uh, the things that we do to the point of becoming pathological you know and K2 represents our security paradigm and what we what we usually think we need to have to feel okay to the point where it becomes out of control or it becomes an imbalance or a disease and you know so what is disease in many ways it's just the absence of freedom of expression you know and freedom of being so when we can't be in whatever way we want to be and we're unhappy we're diseased whether we have a physical illness or not if we're unhappy if we're not freely expressing we're not emotionally mature and content and happy in life, then yeah, we're sick, we're diseased, even if our physical body is fine. And this is where astrology becomes so valuable, is that like deep psychological insight that it gives, that a doctor, that the Western allopathy, that all these other things like can't seem to get to. And we do have a lot of great psychology and stuff like that in the modern world and psychologists are doing great work with people but but even that without having a chart it's so hard to know what complex is the deepest one or what's the deepest root issue in a person's psyche you know and then there's also like it's the same thing with health like there can be all these problems with health and I remember when I took my first astro astrological health course it was very big on that where it was saying how yeah you know like you, you you might be a great doctor but someone can have a headache for four or five different reasons and you if you don't really know the reason or the cause of that headache it's hard to diagnose it and so astrology shows us those root causes of things you know and so it gets deep down to the root of the issue and let's just and so then healing can can occur what do I mean by healing well what's profound is that like uh, in the same way that homeopathy works um, and and uh, therapy works and stuff, uh, just bringing your attention to a situation and kind of understanding in a new light can create all the healing that you need. So like I've had situations in my life where like I just, through learning astrology, it just became so clear to me like why I was doing this and why it was kind of, why it was happening and why it was all my fault and all created in my mind and these were my habits. and. So I started trying to change them and it's very hard over time they are changing and they have shifted and I've experienced a higher state of fulfillment as a result. Does that make sense? Um, I really hope it does. And so that's, that's what we're doing with astrology and this is why it is a yogic art. This is why it is a yogic art because to get self-realized, we the chart shows the blocks to us getting self-realized. You know what I mean? It shows where we're going to get hung up on. Oh, you've been hung up on you know, money for your many lives. You know, um, Yogananda's best disciple, this guy, Rajarsi Janakananda, St. Lin, they, he called him James Lin. You know, he was an advanced Himalayan yogi with Yogananda in past lives, but he had reincarnated with this great boon of being like a millionaire and having all this money and an oil tycoon um, in the early part of the century. And one of his last attachments was to money, you know, and Yogananda could see that because when you're totally self-realized, you don't need a chart. But until then, you usually need a chart. But Yogananda was able to just see it in him and know that that was the last obstacle and helped him work through that and get to liberation. So um, if you're fortunate enough to have a divine master, then you go stick to that master. And you shouldn't even be watching this video if that is a true master and you're truly devoted. You just 
keep doing that, please. But um, most of us in the world don't have that luxury, right? <laughs> and so most of us need to have something to um, help us build up new karmas and build up better sanskaras and let go of the old ones. And when we're ready, we'll meet that teacher will reach that next step. So astrology is this wonderful tool in that regard. It can be a wonderful stepping stone. It can be like a guru for you in some ways. And many of you, the majority of you who are watching this channel are studying astrology on your own and trying to heal yourselves. And that's really great. And I support that and advocate that and have nothing bad to say about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a really great thing. Most of the people that are going to be watching this channel that just want readings, I would say just go get readings. Don't, you know, if you just need help with something, don't spend five years trying to learn astrology to do it. Just pay a guy to do it for you. But, um, but the real, a lot of the real healing benefit in astrology is the study of it and is the learning of it. And that's why, you know, these, these masters of astrology in the ancient times were, were pretty wise people, you know? Okay, so why are Rahu and Ketu so critical or so important in the context of healing? Um, it's not, you know, there's there's a lot of things important, but why are they important? Well, I think it's because, I think the reason that they show the deepest karmas, well, there's so many ways to look at this. Here's one way that I've been thinking recently. The sun and its path is called the ecliptic. The moon and its path is not the same thing and the moon will be like in front or below the ecliptic and like wandering through it throughout the year so the points that the moon's path and the sun's path cross is the point of Rahu and Ketu that's where there will be an eclipse occurring because they're going to cross and the moon will block the sun or the sun will block the moon and so the sun is our soul and the moon is our like jiva consciousness our earthly consciousness our personality whereas the sun is our individuality you know what I mean who we are deep down and these these deep strong things of who we are and then the moon is more like changing how we're growing and changing throughout the day and the year and the time and the life so you know what I mean and this more adaptable side of ourself um, where we're growing you know this this feeling side of us well really what makes us human is the moon and so their cross, you know, where they cross is Rahu and Ketu. So the cross between your soul and your earthly self or your soul and your ego, you know what I mean? And where they cross is the point of Rahu and Ketu. So that's why that's such a dynamic, stress, fun, healing, pain, all at once sort of thing. You see what I'm saying? Um, and they show where your soul is going to, you know, get caught up or think, oh, I need to grow here. I need to be more lunar here. Or no, I need to pull back you know what I mean? Or, or what is it? And this is where we get hung up. And you know, if the sun is going to be eclipsed, if even the sun cannot avoid that fateful moment, and I can calculate it right now and tell you when it happens, you know what I mean? Then are you going to be able to avoid it? Not that easily, right? <laughs> um, same thing with the moon. You know, if the moon cannot avoid that, then you can't, your moon can't avoid it. And so it's, it symbolizes these major hangups or these major blocks that like Rahu literally means eclipsed, dark, you know what I mean? Like blocked out. Um, so of course that's where we need healing, you know? Of course that's where we need that. So um, when it comes to like health readings and healing and uh, spirituality readings as well, and like being the, the best person you can be and learning about your Dharma, Rahu and Ketu and understanding those is really critical. If you want to go into psychology and um, be helping people at a really deep level, being like a Jung, you know, um, type of astrologer, you should really get into Rahu and Ketu and try to master those um, as best you can, try to understand them as best you can. It's kind of, it's a an, it's an never ending thing probably. I don't know if master is really the right way to, right word for it. Uh, also, I mentioned Jung because Carl Jung, the great psychologist, um, worked a lot with archetypes, but people don't understand that he was actually an astrologer and he did the charts of every single person who he read uh, or who he did a, you know, a psychological evaluation for. He read their natal chart as well and he used that as like a cheat sheet for him to understand their issues. So that's why he was able to help people so much. Um, so, you know, if you want to be like one of those people, then... You definitely want to want to go deep into studying Rahu and Ketu and understanding them or get a reading on them if, if 
if you're really not feeling like you're sure of it. Basically, if I do a reading for someone, um, and it's a, you know, a lot of the readings focus on this because it's important, um, and I go into their Rahu and K2, like three fourths of the time they're going to be crying. You know what I mean? Like that's just how it is. So if they don't cry during that reading, you know, I almost feel like I did something wrong. I almost feel like I didn't read their Rahu and K2 right because that's how sensitive and how painful these things are for us. You know what I mean? So I don't mean cry like, oh, I made their feelings hurt, like a cathartic episode occurred where they cried or where they realized, you know, something about themselves, realized, oh, that is it. That is what I've been doing, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying you need me to do this. You will figure, like if you go and study your chart and analyze it enough and, and learn about the stuff enough, you will reach that point. And I've definitely made myself cry or whatever. You know what I mean? And in that regard, through studying my own chart and or, how, or other people explaining things about it to me. Um, so yeah, so you know, there's like just different types of readings we can do. And I'm not saying that anyone is right or wrong, but there's predictive readings and you know, you can predict the future for someone. Um, or you can tell them like why that is even happening. Like, do you want to know about this bad thing or like why that breakup just ended? Or do you want me to predict the future girlfriend you're going to meet? Or do you want to know why it ended to begin with and why it's probably going to end in the next one? If you don't stop doing, you know, if you don't start making changes or do something different, um, that's, that's a big part of what Rahu and K2 will be about, but that's so painful. So we squirm and shake and cry and it's just like a, you know, it's a bitter pill to swallow often, uh, the Rahu K2 thing. And so, you know, like if you're a reader, you don't want to go too heavy and just like, just only talk about that the whole time in the reading, especially if it's their first one. But, you know, as a reader, you need to learn how to read their chart and see what they can, see what they can handle hearing, and what they can't handle hearing. That's not something that I'm going to go into in this video though. Um, but anyways, yeah, Rahu and K2 are what you really want to understand. And honestly, I think if we were going to have sun signs in modern day parlance, we should use K2 signs. We shouldn't use sun sign. We should use K2 sign. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'll actually, I'm going to do a video about that after this. So I'm going to do K2 through the, the 12 zodiac signs. And it's funny because that takes like a year and a half long period. But a lot of the people in that year and a half long period will have these these issues on some level. And it's kind of hilarious. Um, so if there was any sort of thing to like cookie cut, just be like, oh, everyone born in this month is that. I think that the K2 sign is way more powerful and way more funny and way more entertaining. To, if you were to hire me to do your magazine um, to do your horoscopes, that's what I would do. I would say, look up your K2, here's how you do it, what born, what year you were born, here's a chart, this is where it was. And then I would say, you know, I would say something about that. I wanted to say. When it comes to healing, sometimes, I talked about this in that book review, Heal Your Wounds, um, but it's worth saying again that when it comes to healing, say, you have a problem where you can't um, say your your body feels unhealthy or you're overweight and you want to lose weight and so you try to send like healing energy to your body and this pure source energy or you do these visualization or this Reiki or all these various things you could do you know and you're imagining healing but you're still kind of focusing I'm healing my obesity like I'm working on losing weight or say I need um, you know I want to be in love like I'm focusing on I want to be in love. So that's also sometimes reinforcing that I'm not in love. And so that's why sometimes that sort of healing doesn't really work. And you do you just go to an astrologer, you get a good healing from a reader. And they just tell you like, more of, they just kind of educate you on your situation, you know, and they just tell you like, Oh, yeah, like that happened. That makes sense. Man, I'm really sorry that this happened to you. I can tell it that you know, that was really not expected and that was really painful and stuff. And they're like, yeah, that was. And they're like, gosh, yeah, that that wasn't my fault, was it? That just happened, you know, and I can move on. And, you know, I can accept that. I can move on with that. They generate a different type of energy doing that. And that's that energy of like acceptance. And we talk so much about how acceptance is important in healing. You know what I mean? In, in all the different uh, methodologies and stuff when it comes to wellness and holistic healing and all just acceptance is 
really critical. And so sometimes when we're doing healing practices, like our vibration really hasn't changed. We're saying, oh, I need to get more money. Like, so I'm sending healing energy and I'm manifesting myself having all this money. And you're kind of just like thinking about the need for money just as much as money then you're still reinforcing that need, that lack consciousness. And so then when we just, it, it's hard to explain, but it's like when we, it's the same idea with break, trying to break habits. If we focus on not doing the habit, we actually just dwell on the habit a lot more. And because the mind doesn't easily think in terms of like negatives as it does just the thing. So if you think don't, like the, like this funny Simpsons episode when I was a kid, it always reminded me of it. Homer Simpson's trying not to drink beer. So he goes, don't drink beer. Don't think about beer. So, of course, all he thinks about is beer, right? And so it's just so obvious. But it's hilarious. But that's really what happens in healing. And we dwell so much in our issues that we keep manifesting them, you know? And so getting astrology reading, it tells you like, wow, this is all in your head. This is just what you've been doing. Yes. But you can accept this like this is you and you can love yourself and and for the situation it's 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 just a part of the the role you're here to play at this moment in this time and you you get this sense of like love and acceptance and then you can go from there to just you can live more freely from there and then what's funny is you actually do start changing and creating new karmas from that state of because now you're in a vibration of love so you're just loving things so you're just changing it's magical and that's yeah, that's alchemy for you, you know, and that's what's happening through through astrology and through healing and self-acceptance rather than through like trying to change or fix ourselves, quote unquote, or, you know, work on ourselves. But there's value in that, too. But just our deepest issues um, oftentimes require a higher degree of insight than we currently have. And so getting an astrology reading is what gives us that higher insight, that higher level of acceptance and ability to love and surrender and forgive. And forgiveness is sort of like the stopping of karma. It stops that wheel of karma. Or if, you know, it's if it was a ball of yarn, it just starts rolling it and unwinding it. You know what I mean? However you want to look at it. Okay. I hope this book, I hope this helps you guys.